So uh, let me let me do the check the roll, uh, and then we will uh, allow the ladies, all ladies who would like to uh, to support Sonia tonight. Sonia is uh, our only uh, student, female student tonight, who's going to be giving a, a speech. And if you'd like to support her, uh, you can come back here uh, in just a moment. But let me let me check uh, call the road here. Alan here. Carmen and Donna's here and Reggie. Reggie's over team. Not over time, out of town. Penny. <laughs> and William. Mm -hmm. And Peter and Young are not here. And Martin is here and Jason. And Roger and Sonia and Rita and Rita and Jim McCoy. Uh, uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. No, not here. Not here. Richard is here. And Paul Keith. And your mom. Uh, I'm going to ask Jim if he will. Say a prayer, lead some prayer, and then all the ladies who would like to, if you want to get up and, and come into the classroom here, uh, that's where the ladies will be, are in Roger's office, excuse me, and, and uh, Sonia's going to give her speech in here. Our Heavenly Father, we only approach that throne and give thanks to you for the day. Thank the Lord for every soul that's here tonight and their desire to study from the Word to grow in grace and knowledge, but to develop the skills that are being taught. And we pray that we'll take everything that we learn out into this world and that we we'll use it to the best of our ability to lead souls to you. Forgive us of our wrongs. Help us as we struggle through this life to be better, to be the example that we need to be so that the world can see you living in us. In Christ's name I ask. Amen. 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 <coughs> well, you know, that's uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, I heard this story. I, I don't know if I, I don't remember where I heard this, but it, 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 it's it's about uh, Brother N. B. Hardiman, and that Brother N. B. Hardiman had preached a sermon one Sunday or at a meeting or something, and a young preacher came up to him and he said, "Brother Hardiman, that, that was just a wonderful sermon. Do you mind if I preach it?" And Brother Hardman said, well, I don't mind if the guy I got it from mine. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and that is, uh, it's true, I do it my water. Uh, people can come up with, I, I, I do that when I go to lectures and uh, when I'm, uh, able to hear other preachers preach, you know, I don't necessarily everything to say, but uh, sometimes you just take a point that they make. You know, you, you can take a point that they make, and, and it, it, it's just such a good point that you want to develop that thought a little more. Um, all of you did a great job. Uh, just, uh, just in. in an observation here, a few things. Um, you you want to uh, those of you who did it without notes, boy, that's spectacular. Uh, that's that's really good. Uh, I'm not I'm not of that nature. Uh, I tell people I'm a noted preacher. <laughs> I carry my notes in the pulpit with me. Uh, I need them. Uh, but um, th there there was a. A few of you who almost uh, you could say that what you what you did this this evening was a textual uh, because you were you, you you took a text and basically you you took your point from the text and so it's a little that's what we're going to be talking about tonight uh, from 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 the standpoint of, of our lesson uh, tonight which is textual. Preaching. Um, the particular text for this lesson that I've chosen to, to sort of use as a 
launching pad, and that's what I look at, at uh, text and topical sermons as. Uh, a text and a topical sermon, I was uh, sharing with uh, uh, some others here earlier. Um, yesterday was our um, graduation day. We were honoring, we had five young people that graduated from high school, and so we were honoring them, and uh, the uh, shepherds, uh, newly installed, but they said, we, we, we'd like you to have a lesson that focused specifically on them, and the young man who has really spearheaded and, and, and worked with the young people gave me the idea uh, in, in, in talking about some of the youth who have graduated and gone off to school and they sort of just, as oftentimes tragically kids do, they fall away. And so the title of my lesson was <coughs> Keeping the Faith. And I, I used 1 John chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 as my as my text but it was a it was a topical sermon I didn't take my points from that text but I I shared that text just simply for the purpose of emphasizing you know the, the challenges that you're going to be having in the world that the world is is going to set up roadblocks and, and that's the nature of the world. And there is something that you can have that will help you overcome the world. Be victorious in the world. And that's your faith. And so from there, I, I just gave them four quick ideas with regards to um, uh, how to maintain and keep the faith that really their parents have, and I, and I tried to emphasize this was my first point, is that your parents just simply can't transfer their faith to you. What they can do is they can guide you through the process to where you take on a faith that's all your own. But now as you're leaving and moving into the world, you've got to take that faith and you've got to take care of it. You know, it's entirely up to you to nurture it and to, and, to, and, and to do things that will help it to grow. So that was uh, the, the nature of First John chapter 5, as I said, was a launching pad. It, it, was, it was where we began, but I didn't get any of my points from that text. Now tonight, we, we are interested in... Uh, and talking, Brother Walker, would you uh, pass these out uh, to everyone? You've got your mask on, and, and I'm talking. So, um, what he's given you is it's got two sermons on it that, again, appear in this book, uh, which is entitled Sermon Design and Delivery. Has anyone looked into this yet? I know somebody. Have you looked into it? Is it available? I ordered one off eBay. Okay, so if you can check it at eBay, Amazon possibly, if, if anyone is interested in it. Uh, I said this was the, the textbook that I had in one of my homiletics classes. Um, and, and I do remember the, the teacher uh, that I had for homiletics and for this particular homiletics class, Brother Billy Mix. He did emphasize the difference uh, between what is in this book identified as textual preaching and expository preaching. Now, and, I, and I'll share with you what this particular Brother Holland in this particular book uh, says about these two types, but in my in my approach and in, in, in what I have done in my uh, studies over the years, I really don't make a distinction between 
uh, textual and expository. Uh, but I will, like I said, I'm going to give you the definition uh, that uh, Brother Holland uh, gives for both uh, textual and expository. Um, this is the definition for a textual sermon. A textual sermon is one in which the text provides both the subject and the main heads of the discussion. Uh, brother, uh, I'm not going to ask you what your name is. I'm going to look at my grade sheet and tell you, call your name. Uh, brother Wee, Brother Pat, uh, your, your particular lesson, you had you had the you had the text, and and then you had you basically got your points from that from that text, and so that that's why it had the it it, it, it carried with it the sense of, of, of a text one. And, and again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be I'm not critical of that. I thought it was it was well done, very well done. Uh, but uh, so you have your 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 subject matter. You have your subject, the point, the main subject that you're addressing is found in the text. And then your major points uh, uh, are, uh, for example, I guess it would be uh, Roman number one, Roman number two, Roman number three if you're using the classic outline formula. Uh, and then this is his definition for an expository sermon. Uh, he, he says, an expository sermon is based on a biblical passage, usually longer than a verse or two. The theme, the thesis, and the main and minor divisions all come from the passage. And, and so, uh, the way I, I would uh, define that, and, and, and I, uh, my introductory yesterday to the high school graduating kids was, uh, I remember my high school graduation <laughs> like it was a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember that much about it. Well, I don't remember that much about my homiletics class either. Uh, uh, but what, what I I did this particular book I, I just found so it was it was the best book that we had. We had three quarters of homiletics, and this was the best book that we had as a textbook. And I did read it, and I, I underlined or highlighted a bunch of it because I found it very helpful. Um, but, uh, as I was saying, the, the, the text, the textual approach, as I would understand Brother Holland to be presenting it, you would have your main points from the text, but you might go elsewhere to get your sub-points. Alright? And, and, uh, but in an in a expository, you're in essence getting everything from the text that you are, are, are presenting. Now, we will do uh, next week a lesson that's entitled Preparing and Presenting Bible Class Lessons. Now, I almost decided not to do the text or the, the expository until then. Because that's where I'm more apt to do and follow that procedure in a Bible class. Where if you're doing, a, in fact, uh, yesterday we started an expository presentation on 1 John. That we're going to be doing in the adult <coughs> Bible class for the next several weeks. And uh, so, it, you know, obviously... 
when you're when you're doing both a textual and an expository, if there's any difference, and I, as I said, I don't necessarily uh, see much of a difference between the two, uh, with the exception that I use the textual approach in in most of my preaching rather than a topical. But when I'm doing a book of the Bible in a Bible class, uh, that's probably where I would follow Brother Holland's formula more closely in the presentation of the material. But in either case, what, what would you consider to be the most important thing that you need to know The text, the Bible, the book. You can't, I, 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 just, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can do justice in a textual sermon if you find somebody's textual sermon and you find that outline and you just take that outline and you work it up and you can preach it. I don't think you can do that justice. The only way that you can do justice to a textual sermon is that you need to be very familiar with the book from which that text is coming from. You need to understand the background of it. You need to understand uh, some things about the writer of that book. You need to appreciate if there's a problem that is being addressed, and in most cases there is, if there's a problem that's being addressed, you need to understand as much as you can about that problem. You need to understand the text in its context. If you don't, I don't see how you can present it in a way that makes it practical for the congregation that you're preaching to. You, you, that to me again. I go back to that. I'm, I was hammering on that last week, and I, I, it's the same. It doesn't matter if you're doing a, a topical sermon or a textual sermon, or if there's a difference in the expository. You're teaching the Bible class. That you, you want to help them to appreciate the background of it, but you also want them to appreciate the relevance of it to their lives. We hear this in a prayer all the time, and and, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to condemn the words, but sometimes I, I fear when I hear it that it, that's all it is, and maybe that's me being judgmental, and I shouldn't. Well, we thank you for the lesson today, and we pray that we can take the things that we've heard today and do what, and apply them to our lives. Well, absolutely, that's what we want to do. But, we, 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 but if, if, if the person who is presenting the material cannot, cannot make it practical in their presentation, they're not given anything that will help the people in the pew to take it and to apply it. It's just an empty wish. And it's a failure on our parts as, as preachers and teachers. Because God's Word is most practical. And we must be able to show it. Now, there is a responsibility on the part of the hearer, obviously. And, uh, and I've just got a few more minutes, and so uh, we're not going to be able to look. We'll, next week, we will look closely at these outlines, both as we're talking about Bible study next week. So, But let me finish with this thought. When, when we are, when we take one of the advantages, in my opinion, of, of preaching textual, textual, is that we get people into the book, Amen. into the Bible, <clears throat> and we help them become familiar with it. And if, if we do that, then perhaps we're providing them with an avenue whereby 
one of you mentioned it in your lesson, you know. Uh, I, think, I think it was Brother Cotton with regards to how much time you spend with God. You know? If we can if we can encourage them, sometimes in my preaching I say, now we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about this point a whole lot. But I want you to this afternoon, I want you to go home and I want you to read this passage of scripture as it connects to this point here. I challenge them with things like that so they can they can do that. We must make it practical. But you know what? The most practical presenter will get nowhere with a Christian who has who is not growing spiritually in their own life. To the point where they can appreciate the practicality, and so there, there, it, it is a give and take relationship with the speaker and the audience. But we must challenge them by showing them how to apply. The application is up to them, but we must, we must show them that hey, this is applicable, and it can make your life better. <coughs> And it can help you have a greater relationship with God. All right. My time is up.